All right, we're recording, my friend. All right, man. Here we go. All right, so here we go. Thank you, Jerome Scaturo, for joining me today on this uh, uh, podcast. Uh, let me start by introducing you, man. I think you're one of the uh, baddest students I know uh, for sure. So, uh, so five-time Ironman finisher, right? That already, that already, oh, yeah. that already qualifies you in my books for a fucking badass. <laughs> that's that's going to be on my grace. Time, How about the badass? Is that going to be part of the uh, part of it as well? Of course. All right. <laughs> uh, also, ultra marathoner. I know you've done like seventeen of them. Uh, one of them being over a hundred miles. Uh, besides that, you also have a license in clinical alcohol and drug counseling. Yeah. Right. Approved yeah. clinical supervisor, and I think by if you remove all those things, at the end of the day, one of the things that I guess drew me to you from the beginning was the fact that you had a freaking black belt. <laughs> and then you had to throw it into the mix yeah. that you had a, a, a third degree black belt. I was like, what the, a third degree yeah. black belt? I had to. I had to. And I'm like, all right, what kind of martial <laughs> art? Huh? What's that? No, it's, you know, it, it, it's different levels to that. So. I know. And then I started doing some research. I'm like, all right, a black belt. What the, a black belt? And what, what, kind of, what kind of martial <laughs> arts is it? And then no, but seriously, man, I think the fact that you went from a from a white belt to a black belt is a very huge uh, uh, success in your books and any in, in any uh, martial arts. But how do you, how do you pronounce this? Ishing 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 Ryu. Ishing Ru Karate. Ishing Ru Karate. It's a Japanese. It's an Okinawan based art that was originally designed. The the originator uh, worked with um, the American Marines that came, over. so he. It's an Okinawan based art that started really um, way back in the, in the 50s. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so, I know for sure, I, thought, I started doing some research, like I told you before we started recording, and I realized that uh, that there's a lot of levels to this thing. Mm-hmm. Right? So, mm-hmm. you went from a UQ, UQ, is that how you pronounce it? A UQ? You got it, yep. Yeah, UQ, which is uh, about pretty much everybody starts as a white belt, right? And it's right. different, different degrees. And you rose all the way to Sandan, which is a third degree black belt. Right. Can you tell yeah. me? Can you tell me more about that? Like, uh, what's the uh, like your your sensei? I know you spoke about how your sensei pretty much was your driving force to for you to continue, really. Yeah. So I I took I took uh, mission Rook karate when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Probably started at age ten. Um, but then I stopped in high school. I got my uh, my brown belt. But then when I went to college. They had the same style at Penn State, Mission Rue. So I was reintroduced to it, and I was reintroduced to my sensei, and, and he just, his whole dynamic of, of training and, and getting the best out of yourself kind of was the driving force behind my, my biggest change in my life, like that road, that fork in the road, so to speak. So, yeah. Yeah, and it was just his dynamic and, and the way he trained, and, and I loved his style and how he did it. I mean, he basically, he broke you down and, and made you become better from looking at those things inside yourself that you needed to work on without even knowing it breaking, through movement. Breaking down, and, and you know, I think that's what kind of uh, got you and I, or that's, what, I guess, the hook that, uh, because I was you know, out in the Marine Corps, that's kind of, in the, in the military, they break you down and bring you back up, right? Uh, yeah, he was a he, he was a marine, former marine, so he he, he taught kind of militaristic. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that, right? No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when did you actually start doing the the uh, the karate or the martial arts? So I started at age ten, um, and I got all the way to brown belt. But in you know in high school it's different. You know, I'm doing different sports and everything, so I stopped. Yeah. Um, and but I it was always in my blood watching Bruce Lee when I was younger to to get to kind of like that black belt level. Yeah, you know? he was a little with the nunchucks and all that stuff. But so it was always in my in my DNA, you know, to do it. I had a passion. So when I went to school and I saw it, I was like, I'm in. And I already had a lot of the katas, which is forms of training in me, so I moved quickly. Through those different belts, and that's what I have over here. The uh, uh, I have I started reading about the katas. Um, so oh, a lot, yeah. a lot of yeah, the, man, your research. Man, I knew we were having conversations, so I had to do my research. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> 
No, but uh, I think the katas, you, you know, you have to learn so many to basically demonstrate that you have the capability to uh, to, to do it, right? Um, but that makes you a badass anyway, so. <laughs> well, technically speaking, when you, when you have that, that type of training, meeting on that level, and you reach that level, black belt level, it's, it's kind of, it's directly stated that you, you know how to not only defend yourself, but you know how to protect yourself and others. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's where it comes from. I mean, it's, I mean, if it's official, right? I have an official certificate. Actually, I'll show you. Oh, you got it right there. So this is an official certificate from Okinawa. No so shit. It's signed and printed. Now, have you gone to Okinawa before? No, that's actually on my bucket list someday. Is actually to go to the, the, the dojo, the original dojo, where my the founder who has passed away. Mm-hmm. The founder started. Mm-hmm. That's one of the first, so. Okay. So. Well, man, I know traveling is uh is on everybody's bucket list, and um, yeah, you know this is one of the reasons why I decided to actually launch this podcast. Uh, tough times right now to to freaking travel anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Um. But before we get there, let's. Uh, I, w- I want to make sure that we keep talking a little bit more of your uh, of your background. Um, so you you went on a on a, uh, on, a on a mission to get a license, a license not just to kill, <laughs> but a license to help people. And I really mean that from the all bottoms of my of the heart, right? So a license to help people, and that's kind of where I I met you. Uh, uh, shit, what was it like ten years ago? Um, and I was going through a rough, a rough time myself, and you helped me tremendously just by ha- by being yourself. I didn't feel that you needed a. Uh, a license, but for sure you, you have the license. Can you tell me what is it? I this I tried doing some research on this license, um, and it's a really interesting dynamic that you, you basically. Uh, I don't I don't want to uh, make sure I, I respect what you guys do. The substance abuse counselor, right? Mm-hmm. Is that what? Yeah, substance abuse. Yeah, alcohol, alcohol, and substance abuse, and then also mental health counselor as well. Right. Right. Special. Licensed professional counselor. Yeah. So that's a lot going on there. Um, have you been? Have you been still going to work, or has this uh, pandemic impacted you at all? Good question. So I'm considered essential in the hospital as as a counselor. Okay. Which I, I think you know being on the front lines that's part of it too, right? Mental health. Yeah. And helping people, and and actually helping vulnerable people. So I deal mostly in an outpatient unit. So. That means the patients come three hours, three times a week, outpatients. So they come in, we do group therapy, we do individual therapy, and they leave. Okay. And mo- most of it is, is substance abuse and alcohol use disorder. And most of them are coming because they've been forced to be there legally, probation, dietist, which, you know, the children are involved and such, so. So they've been forced yeah. by the by the by the legal system, I guess. Most of them. Most. Rarely does someone voluntarily come in there. Now, have you seen any? Have you seen anybody uh, go, go in because of this pandemic and every, anything that they're going through right now? Well, I, it's just so it, it's just substance abuse and alcohol. So they're only coming in for that. Okay. They're not coming in for the COVID uh, nineteen. Um, it, it, but they are at the hospital I'm at is actually transforming a part of the union unit for COVID patients. What, what hospital is it that you're working in right now? So it's Newbridge Medical Center in New Jersey. Okay, and I know for yeah. sure the uh, man the, the rates in New York and New Jersey have just skyrocketed, dude. Yeah, um, and, and I'm in Bergen County, so it's increasing over here. So Bergen County. Actually, actually, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, the hospital. No, it's, the hospital I work at. They're 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 building a, a testing site outside. Mm-hmm. It's a just te- the county. A testing site for what? For COVID. The COVID. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm a Jersey boy uh, myself, uh, and you mentioned Penn State before. I kind of avoided saying anything about Penn State, uh, uh, just because obviously, uh, as a I live in Ohio right now, and by sheer, by sheer uh, luck of where I am right now, I'm I became a Buckeye. So. Oh really? Yeah, oh, man. We, we gotta end this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's over. Oh, the heck? oh no! I thought you. Next, you're gonna tell me like you transformed into like 
I don't know. Opposite of the Yankees or something. No, man. Um, so we have to end this right now. You said the <laughs> since uh, obviously you're a Penn State grad. I'm a I'm a I'm a Buckeye grad myself. Big rivalry in football. Uh, wow. But sports, man. Sports is another thing that's been hitting hitting the, the economy right now with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and that sucks, dude. Because I know you've done uh, ultra marathons, triathlons. Um, which which tri- which tries have you done? I've tried doing some research on that, and I uh, well, I, I, I'll I'll keep it simple to the Ironman. So I've been to I've done Louisville, um, I've done Florida, okay, I've done Canada, Mont um, Colorado, and Lake Placid, and then I attempted Maryland, two thousand seventeen Ironman, but I had to drop out. Um, 70 miles into the bike. I was having some, yeah, I was having some, I was having some, you know, and we could talk about it, you know, I was having high anxiety at that time, you know, I was really going through a lot, like, so, what year was this? 2017? Oh, so it was pretty recent. Yeah, I, uh, actually had to get a stress test, I I, I literally thought I had a heart attack. Wait, 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 hold on a second, Jay. So after you swam, for how long did you swim? So it's two. Okay, so let me. So the Ironman's two point four miles. Okay. Swim, okay. Hundred twelve mile bike and then a marathon from there. So after you ran, after you swam two point five, you said two point four miles. After you right. swam, you you hopped on the bike. Um, butt butter? Did you put any butt butter on? Of course. All right. <laughs> I just do that in general. So. All right, all right. So you. <laughs> Now, the, now, seriously, as, from a yeah, str- from a strategic stand perspective, do you do you apply that before you swim or during the during the transition? Well, I just during during the transition, I put it on because when you're swimming in the wetsuit, that kind of that could come off, you know. Okay, all right. But I also I also keep some on my bike too, just in case. So this man, so I have a lot of respect for triathletes. Uh, I'm a I'm a ultra marathoner. You're a, you're both, right? So you're a, a triathlete and an ultra marathoner. Um, well, don't let it get twisted. Your, your viewers gotta know you're a beast too, man. Ultra. No, come on, man. You you're the beast here. No, yeah. but seriously, I, I think the uh, one of the from a strategic standpoint, one thing that I used to do was uh, was plan my 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 entire journey in an ultra marathon. I mean, that if I know I'm gonna go a hundred miles, uh, I, I literally planned out. Anything, anything, and, and everything that I possibly could. Meaning, from uh, from Vaseline, I compartmentalized in little baggies mm-hmm. Vaseline instead of having a jar. Because, because the first time I I, I ran, it was a a hundred k. I think you were in it too. That's when I passed out, yeah. right? And I, right. <laughs> I passed out after what was it twenty something? I forgot what it was. Now I think I, yeah. I I only had one more loop in that damn course, the Gleer. And I and I had a jar of of uh, Vaseline. If you think about it, you're pr- you're pretty much putting your dirty paws, your dirty fingers into the same jar. So after that, I learned that if you compartmentalize this shit, you can use just right. one time use, right? And apply it wherever you you have a uh, the need to, right? So right. So how about you for for the transitions? Do you do that as well? Yeah, I mean, preparation's everything, right? Like like you mentioned, like you had stated, like. And I remember when we were doing races, it's, it's all in the, in the little minute details. But I only learned that from racing and then, you know, forgetting things or not being hyper-focused on the essentials. Like, you think that, like, having enough Vaseline is, like, minute, but when you're hours and hours into a, a race, that becomes, like, important, like, those little things, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and you know preparation. I know that the uh, you know with this pandemic that started in China, um, as per, as uh, you know they say they may have started in China. We, we still don't know yet. But wherever it started, it, it just blew up there, right? Um, and right now we're pretty much. Are you on? Are you? I'm assuming you're on lockdown in New Jersey, right? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. We're in Ohio. We're on lockdown. And one of the things that the governor over here, the governor Dewine, he's he did from the beginning, man. He uh. He canceled the uh the this uh, this a big event over here called the Arnold. You've probably heard of it. Yeah. 
So a lot of people come in uh, from all, all over the world and they cancel that shit. So when they cancel that, I was like, whoa, it's, this is, that's kind of when I started saying this is getting serious. They're, they're actually considering canceling one of the biggest events in, 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 the, in the town, in the, in the, in the country. Uh, um, so preparation is a key, right, to pretty much anything. Um, it sucks that we're going through this, but, uh, you know, I did ask you about the pandemic and, and over there in your hospital. How's your hospital handling all this stuff? It's good. You know, there's a lot of protocols that they have. Like, for example, like, you know, there's, you can only go through one entrance and every person that goes through has to have their temperature checked. Okay. And if you're not a, an employee, um, you have to verify where you're coming from. You know, and then you're, you know, masks, masks are all, all over. Um, everything, you know, Purell, everything spilled, soap, dispensers spilled, everything. So it's, um, it's a little eerie, you know, it's a little eerie, but mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I just feel like I'm doing a cause, I'm doing a good cause and help people, you know, I'm trying to help them work through their anxieties and fears, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where we're tested the most, but you know, this is where, you, you know, and we'll talk about it, I'm sure about preparation, yeah. you know, just yeah. about preparation, but preparing for, you know, as a society, I think we want to prepare for good all the time it's going to be great i'm not going to have any fears i'm not going to have any anxiety but we're faced and that's not true yeah so for me i think i think i'm staying calmer because i mean we've dealt and prepared for fears and anxieties i think through our training you know goals reaching goals right the challenge of that what that looks like and frustration and and all those things yeah. and that's kind of where why i wanted to bring you on 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 here because i know that uh you know for whoever's listening out there they, they're gonna say all right so you have somebody here that's a black belt a licensed uh a counselor um a triathlete a mar ultra marathoner like you're such a great guy such, such a great dude what's what's the link over here right but at the end of the day uh i think you and i both know you know i've done several ultras myself with you um it's a couple of things that you could do to prepare, right? Before any any race, any 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 sport, right? I know I keep focusing on triathlons and ultra marathons, but and there's a lot of sports out there that you could you could uh, uh, dive deep into. Uh, but as any athlete to tell you, whether it's amateur or or professional, you have to prepare, right? Mind, body, and soul to be able to to, to train well and that training is going to essentially uh, allow you to execute on, on, on your skill sets efficiently right um, yeah. and as far as preparing man it's, prepping is, is, is a key like uh, Lockie uh, Lockie the swimmer the, uh, I think he's a five five gold medal uh, uh, Olympic medalist mm -hmm. they were interviewing him a couple of days ago and I and I watched that interview and they were asking him, "Hey, how do you feel about the fact that you're uh, that the Olympics has been have been canceled? They train for four years. <laughs> Think about that, right? I know, I know. You know, and and for a triathlon, what's your what's typical for you to train for a triathlon? I mean, it depends. Like for an Ironman, you know, you need to really, you know, you need to put eight months from a, a progression of a training plan, right? Like, yeah." You know, I mean, you're peaking, you're trying to peak at that right time. Um, so I think, you know, giving a good solid eight months of a, of a, of a steady progressive training plan is important. Yeah. For, for that event, you know, but that's a larger scale. Yeah. You know, you have, have smaller scale triathlons where the basic triathlon. So with, uh, so you're talking about, you spoke about anxiety before, as far as you personally going through anxiety, uh, you were on your seventieth mile, you know, when you when you decided to pull back. Um, and I know that it's a it takes a it takes a lot of fucking guts, man, to to pull out. Uh, you know, <laughs> it takes a lot of guts to pull out. But I myself had to pull out out, out of race too, right? Um, I'm not sure if you remember, but I, I did the uh, Keys 100 where you started Key Largo. And the whole goal is to basically go for 100 miles to Key West, Key Largo to Key West. Um, brutal fucking course. I uh, thought it was going to be simple. Uh, I did prepare for it uh, 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 mentally, physically. 
Um, but it just took the best out of me, man. It was hot as shit. It was flat. I wasn't prepared for that. I'll tell you right now. It was very flat. And I got chafing in areas that I never really considered <laughs> that I could get chafing. And that took a lot out of me mentally because, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, at four o'clock in the morning, we kicked off. We kicked off at four o'clock in the morning. So I got up like at two o'clock, like, a, you know, two hours before with anxiety. Um, you know, I was nervous as hell, like, you know, just normal butterflies that you get. And then when I kicked off at four, like everybody else, I was mentally, you know, I was there. You know me, when I get there, man, I had no shirt. I was just pumped up with my two bo- hey, water bottles. You're, you're, you're a different breed out there. <laughs> and I was just, ri- was that? Everything about you out there is different. Was that? What, what you all mean? I keep remembering is, is, is the song Super Freak. And that one race, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never, that song will never be the same again when I hear it. Why is that? Beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> man. I'll never forget that race. That was the clear race. So. That was, that was. Yeah, that was. Super freak, super freak. No, no, no. This is good. This is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, man. I I hallucinate, as you know. It was just. Yeah. And I think I was on the. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when you came up with? You came up with this. You wanted to be like a, a race director for. <laughs> what kind of race? What kind of race director was it? <laughs> no, you know. Oh <laughs> yeah, I had this crazy vision where I was just like, and I, I think you told me about this. That's the only one of the races that I remember this is because I during the run, right during one of the loops, I think I told you. I mean, you you have a better way of a better clear memory. It's like you told me that I, uh, I I came up with this crazy idea as far as creating this event where everybody's running naked. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, can you imagine that was part of your hallucination that was part of my hallucination it was that's, that's it right was. Uh, it was It was. I love that man that's yeah. that's the uh, what is it the runner's high and then also too I think you know just understanding the, the, the fun of of doing these things you know because yeah. there were so many times where we were serious about doing them and then the fun comes out right that laughter that belly laughter the, the tears of, of happiness from just doing this and that's part of it too you know and i think that's kind of where uh, a lot of people need it right right about now right because with this yeah, pandemic, with, with this pandemic people are, are feeling i wrote something yeah. down over here where it says feeling yeah. huh i just wanted to say something because yeah. it, it's still on my mind to talk about it with you yep you mentioned i just wanted to tell your audience that you know you you went through all my successes, right? And it's nice. But I'll tell you what, for me, as getting older, that end result, I don't remember the most. So getting the black belt, getting the certifications, finally, you know, after 10 years getting my license, what I do remember and what has made me who I am is the process. The journey. So, the failures, the anxiety of it, the doubts, the fears, that's what's really defined it. So if we if we kind of bring it all together for today's time, that's what's really worked for me to get through these hard times. Is because this is how you're tested. This is how I'm tested, right? Yeah, the the true character the, the true character of people really come out at times right. like this, right? So, and the tool, you know, you I'm, I'm, I've always been inspired by your journeys and, and how committed you are to racing and what you've been through and your your failures and successes because it's made you who you are, you know? So thanks, man. I appreciate so, that. Same yeah. here, man. And, you know, I think uh, people are... We have a mutual respect. Yeah. Above all, it's a mutual respect. They'll always be that. I mean, people are typically afraid of, of, of uncertainty, fear of, of change, fear of failure. Right. Because they've never, in my opinion, they've never been faced with it truly and have to work through that. Yeah, right? yeah. I was going, I, just really quick, in 2000, I started my journey for my licensed professional counselor in 2007. I had to get my master's, right? I got my master's degree. 
it took me from the time I got my master's. I failed the exam for that te- test, for that certification, five times. Holy shit. Five years, and I wanted to give up. After three, I wanted to give up. And you pay 200 something dollars each time. And do you know, I finally passed it in 2018. And I got my professional counsel license in February. Perseverance. Oh, man, that was the hardest thing ever. But I wanted to quit. So, you know, uh, I, I think we're both uh, sharing some, some, some feedback with each other that it's just like, it's probably... You, you probably wouldn't have never told that to anybody else uh, besides your right. wife or your family or yourself, really, right? Um, yeah. But I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, that go through these, time, these times of, uh, of testing, right? Because you're being tested the entire time. Um, right. But at the end of the day, you're, if you fail one of these tests, one of these certifications, some people just give up. Um, like for me, uh, I'll share with you the... Uh, uh, I was in the Marine Corps, as you know, um, as you said before, and one of the things that I wanted to do for a while was join the State Department, um, because that's kind of where I, I lived in Moscow, Russia, I lived in Bosnia, and I, I saw the, the how crucial these, uh, these how crucial, number one, and how pretty awesome that these uh, State Department represent, representatives, uh, Foreign Service officers, they would work out there. I've taken the test multiple times, and, uh, I, you know, I haven't passed them, but I still continue to, to, to have that that uh, that desire to, to do that. Um, I haven't taken it again yet, but to your point, man, I think some people, you know, imagine you would have just said the first time or the second time, just said, fuck it, I'm not going to continue doing this. You would have never achieved where you are now, but I think now you're in a good position, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're in a position to actually help people out now figure out how to cope with stress, how to cope with anxiety, how to cope with failure and how to just continue pushing because and this is kind of where you tie everything together like you said you, you've gone through these through these journeys physical athletic journeys also professional journeys and just yourself right so how do you actually help out people then what's what's your, do you have a method to that yeah that's a good question um i, I think i think what i've what i've discovered is that you need to have you need to have a person come to their own conclusion Right, so advice is advice if someone asks for it. So when someone wants help, they're, you know, they're very rarely are they going to directly ask for advice, right? Okay. And if they do, most of the time, they're probably not going to want to hear what you have to say. However, people will come to their own conclusion when they're desperate enough. And I've learned that through working in the addictions field, the substance abuse field, and for myself, that when I get desperate enough, and I have no other choice, I'm then willing to listen to somebody else that either I can identify with, and has had the same experience, or possibly close to the same experience that I've had. And then what they'll, and if you're, so my strategy is that, right? I will let you come to your own conclusion. So I find a way to have you play your own story out and talk about it so and share it. You know. So how the heck do you do that then? I mean, that's some pretty clever it, shit. <laughs> it is. It, it is. And, and it's almost like, and, and again, I'm not trying. I, I felt like I've always had the gift of being able to help people, right? So there's a difference between, you know, a nurse, right? I can never imagine that, or a doctor today, right? That's a gift, like that's tough. physical, yeah, like that's they're tough. on the front lines. So the parallel part of that from helping people is understanding that everyone has feelings, and to be able to break down someone's defense, right? Because we all come with defense mechanisms. Mm-hmm. Once you can do that. It's easy to understand how people are feeling. And the gift part of it, I'm saying, is that I have an ability. People have, people feel comfortable around me enough and trust me enough to tell me what they're going through. And not everyone has me. But it's, it, it's something I didn't learn in a book. You know? This was way back, even when I was, I, was a, I was a kid, I remember. So it's, an, it's pretty much an, an innate 
capability that you have to be able to yes. to do that. Because trust is not like trust is built, but it's also empathy and compassion. Right? If someone if someone comes in, which they have, right, been, been in jail, uh, have stolen, have lied, have cheated, had a guy that used to rob banks, drug addict, alcoholic, to get someone like that to trust me is, it takes time and empathy and compassion and that, for that person, with their defenses down, to trust me. So how do you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was captivated. I was just like looking at you. I was like, you know, I, you drew me in, but how do you, how do you do that? Because if, how do I, I mean, without, I know you have a, a client, a client uh, agreement. You can't really talk about uh, too much, right. but um, how do you. I just can't mention a name, that's all. Okay. So how do you, how, how can somebody right now with, with everything that's going on, how can a, a couple, a married couple. That they're cooped up together in, in in the same apartment, in the same house, um, you know, with a child or without a child, or by themselves. How, how how can somebody have that empathy, uh, build that? Because me as a man, I'll tell you right now that not just because of, uh, as a man. Let me just rephrase that. Me, I have a tough time sometimes, man, uh, realizing that being empathetic. Uh, but I know that for sure, and I, and I work on it. I have worked on it so much. Um, but how do how how can you help somebody like right now with whoever's listening to this stuff? Um, what can what can they do to sit back and say, you know what, this is day twenty five of quarantine, whatever it is. I'm cooped up with my with my spouse. Uh, you know, I can't go to work, or I am going to work, or I just lost my job. I have so much anxiety, this uh, depression, uh, and then they turn to Jack Daniels or beer or wine. I've done that before. You know, uh, like I told you when uh, when we first met, the you know my my daughter she had uh, she she was born with a severe uh, congenital uh, she was born with a severe diaphragmatic hernia and I turned to alcohol, you know, um, and that led me down the path that I was just like you know I was self aware enough to realize that hey this is not who I am. Yeah, it's making me feel great in the short term, but in the long term I have to just you know balance everything out. And that's kind of what got me into the ultra marathon world really. Um, so what are you thinking? So, yeah, so that's a, that's a great point. And I think, you know, you had the mechanism, you said it, you, you were able to say that this is not me because it, in your mind, you're like, okay, I got a family, I got a kid, I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be present. Right. So I think your question of, of being cooped in and being with your family, it's being present. So present to the gratitude of what we have, right? This is not a bad thing. This is a great thing. Which, which, which is not a bad thing. The the, opportunity uh, we have to be cooped up okay. and remind ourselves for the gratitude of what we do have and who we have and who cares for us and who loves us. Those are the things that, that instead of about this is this is presenting an opportunity for me to not say me 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 me. It's an opportunity because it is it is an economic disaster. But it, that's all external stuff. Being having the opportunity to be inside and to find ways and outlets to to really appreciate and have gratitude. I mean, the things that are going to come from this in terms of that energy of gratitude and appreciation is profound. I mean, we could sit here if we had enough time and we can actually not even think about COVID-19, but talk about the family or who we have or the appreciation. And and those are the things that I think that people are, are really going to get out of this. And the social media aspect. They're going to be able to do this right now. Yeah. And that's it's amazing. So my, I guess my point was is, is being present by, by having gratitude. And being so, so basically being present and just uh, acknowledging who's still by your side right at this very moment. Yeah, and, and for example, like real quick, I, I still am getting paid for my other job. You say you still are. I'm getting paid for my other job even though they shut it down. 
and I'm able to go to the hospital and work. I mean, how can I not have gratitude? Yeah. You know, I have my wife. You know, I, I'm, I'm blessed. My, my, my parents are healthy. Thank God. My stepson. You know, those are important. Yeah. I think I think there's, there's, you know, the gratitude, right? The gratitude and being present. But also, what's important is connecting with people that you you both can 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 help each other think differently about this mm -hmm. and not negative, right? Mm -hmm. Staying mindful of how much news I'm watching, staying mindful of how much what I'm what I'm looking at on social media. You know? So because I know that one one of the things is people are going on survival mode, man. Um, I know. And that's that that's challenging. Like for me, I you know, I'm not the only entrepreneur that's going through this stuff. We're all trying to figure it out as we go. Right. So you go, you know, fight or flight, right? And now you're pretty much everybody's trying to just fight to stay alive, right? Yeah, and but the thing about it is, and I think we're we're making a point here is that when you when we prepare for an event yeah. that's challenging, there's always that uncertainty of am I gonna make it? Am I gonna finish? Right? Yeah. Am I gonna finish? But that's also fuel because I gotta prepare, right? I gotta get a certain amount of time. I gotta prepare for that even thought yeah. of that, right? So again, if we if we use the analogy and we parallel it to, to our journeys of you know education and racing and, and sports or whatever, it's the same exact thing. If I'm not prepared. See, I look at this as I do look at this as, as an event. I do look at this as getting a certification at the end of it. I have to do things daily that's going to keep me prepared every day when I wake up. So is, is, this is not a sprint. Is, I, I don't think it's a. I don't even think it's a marathon. No, this is not. I think it's probably like an ultra marathon, like a triathlon. Right, but what if what if we looked at it like from the perspective of the universe, right? Maybe maybe whatever you believe in, whatever higher power, I don't know, whatever it is, maybe it's challenging us to get back into these working these these parts of ourselves that have to rely on uh, appreciation, gratitude, being present. Challenging challenging us again. Yeah. So I decided, I'll see uh so. so you say you think it's the universe talking to us to get ready? Yeah, whatever your higher power is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. No, no, I think I, it's... I, just, I just believe that, that for myself, like, I've just noticed through this so far in the past two weeks that, like, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared, man. Everything that I've been through has prepared me for these moments. Yeah. So this is the time to actually just sit back instead of complaining, or not complaining, but just take a step back. Realize that you're not the only one going through this. No. And the fact that you're not the only one going through this, you could get pissed off, you could get upset. I think, to be honest with you, man, I I, I personally took the time to get upset. Yeah, I took, you have to. You have to. It's normal. Yeah, you, of course. Right. I took the time yeah. to I took the time to analyze and just say, you know what, we're all going through this. What can I do to just move forward? Right. Every single right. day, one step at a time, one day at a time. Kind of like what you said, where uh, uh, one thing that I used to do in, in, in Ultra is saying, I know that I just signed up for a 100-mile race, a 200-mile race, like I did at one time in Vermont. But if I think about that, if I think about the fact that I'm on lockdown every single day, it's just going to drive me nuts, right? If you think about the fact that you're doing a, a, a triathlon every single day, right, and, the fact, and then you get on, 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 the, on, the, on the starting line, and you start thinking about, oh crap, I still have to swim two miles. I still have to do 160 miles. You haven't even started the race yet. That could be a challenging moment, no? Right. So how do you over how can you overcome that then? So yeah, that's a great analogy. Again, yeah. you know, if we know as human beings, and you said it before, you're going to wake up with feelings and thoughts of uncertainty, right? Yeah. So I, I guess my my point was that. There's things that I can do during the day when I wake up to prepare myself, mm -hmm. right, for that day. Mm -hmm. Prepare myself for feelings of, of uncertainty or whatever that looks like. And just like a race, 
right? Like, I, my mindset can be, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, I may not even survive this. But it, it's important to prepare your mind before, you know, as you wake up. Do things. Meditate. Move. So what, you, <laughs> Listen to a play. <laughs> Yeah. You were talking about the anxiety that you had on mile 70. Right. If you don't mind me asking, what was the anxiety about? So I was going through a lot. Um, I mean, you sound like a counselor now. I, sound, really <laughs> I sound like a counselor. <laughs> well, that's a big question, man. That's like I, a, is it okay? I mean, again, is it okay yeah, if I... All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, I always thought that having like a heart attack or any kind of heart condition meant you know, you're not in shape or you're not eating properly or whatever, but I didn't realize that stress is a factor. You know, so. so do you have a heart condition? I have an enlarged, semi-enlarged heart from all the training years. But I think this was, this was more anxiety driven. So there was a lot going on with my family. Um, I wasn't talking to my parents for a good amount of time. That was bringing stress. Um, there was stress at home. And it just was, it was, it caught up to me. And, mm -hmm. You know, I really wasn't fully prepared mentally for that race and emotionally. So you, so, you, you kind of, you kind of knew going into it that you weren't fully prepared. Yeah. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Sorry, I, mean, I, I probably should have that, yeah, but. Sorry, man, I'm having technical, technical difficulties over here. Um, so. <sighs> So you're going through a lot. You you haven't spoken to your parents uh, uh, throughout this time, and you're basically having a lot of thoughts. I, uh, I'm assuming yeah, throughout. Negative, negative thoughts, fearful thoughts. You know things that I couldn't. I was trying to control, but I couldn't. And basically, you were having that while you were swimming, but you still powered through to. You you were having that while you were swimming. Before, even months before, right? I was. I went into it with all this doubt and fear, um, which you know is is normal. But it was at such a high level. You know, so I, I I finished the swim and I got out. And I got on the bike. As soon as I got on the bike, it felt like I was breathing through a straw. And it was every every stroke was was tough. While you were swimming? No, when I got on the bike. Oh, every stroke, every 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 stroke yeah, on, sorry, on the bike. Every, every pedal, yeah, every pedal stroke was was tough. Got it. And I, I kept in my mindset. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do 25 miles. And the wind was really bad there, so I had the wind popping, and I was going like 14 miles an hour, which is like I was battling in my head. Man. Like that's slow. That's really slow. I can't do this. What am I? People are passing me. You know, mentally, I was feeling defeated. So, so self awareness is a huge part of this. Yeah, the battle in my mind, I'm you know, playing back and forth. It's like ping pong. It's like one side of my brain saying quit, the other side of my brain saying don't. Boom, boom. But I was more concerned because it, I ne never felt like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I never felt like. Tightness, and I had it in my chest, and I was like, "Oh, that's not good." <laughs> that's, and I'm assuming that's what kind of a lot of people are feeling right now. Yeah, of course. Um, a lot of high anxiety, and it, it's important. What I learned from that experience, because I finished all my Ironmans except this one, but what I did learn from it is that having a daily practice of self care. Right, self care. What does self care look like for you? And everyone's different. For me, I, I make it a point that I I do some sort of working out, some sort of training, physical, and then I try to meditate. Meditates help me a lot. Meditation. So how can um, some how can somebody that that's uh, are you like can somebody from Ohio can they call you? Somebody from California yeah. can they call you? Are you licensed throughout the the whole U.S. So that's a good point. So I'm only licensed in Jersey. Okay. However, I can do um, I can do online counseling 
with people out of state. Okay. They won't be able. They have to bill back like their insurance, right? So I couldn't charge the insurance. So how? Can, insurance. So how can we help out? How can if, if there's a person out there that's in in dire need of counseling, right? Um, and counseling. Or excuse me. Or fitness training. Counseling exactly. or fitness training, and just because you right. get counseling doesn't mean that you're weak, right? It's just because a lot of people have this this feeling that oh, I'm not going to get counseling because that's that's only for weak people. In my opinion, right. I I don't think that's yeah. that's accurate. And what's great is that myth is is really phasing out. It's phasing out because more people are understanding that they need to rely on talking, sharing their feelings, and not holding that in. So that really, I, I found that, that like anyone that, that feels like they would feel less than by by going to a counselor. Mind you, I'm a counselor, and I've been going to therapy since I was like 16. <laughs> oh, so okay, so you still have you still have the need to do that, oh, yeah. right? So how can I somebody? Would go I would go crazy if I didn't talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so how can somebody get a hold of you then? Yeah, so they can they can either call me. Um, I can maybe you can leave the contact information. Yeah, so what, what I'll do is uh, go ahead and tell, say the number because I'll basically put yeah. that there. Uh, that way people can hear. What's the, what's your phone number? So 908-672-4290. You can call me anytime. And even if even if you're out of state and, and your pay is limited at this time, and I understand, we can work on a slide scale. That's totally fine. I'm, I'm open to that because, you know, my main objective is to help and, and to really – see people kind of get through this. Yeah. And, I read, and, like, yeah. and I read on your bio as well that uh, uh, Psychology Today, is that what it's called? Yeah, so Psychology Today is a website, psychologytoday.com. It, it, it verifies all counseling. So it's an official um, verified site that actually every counselor has to go through or can go through to get verified. I have to send my license and everything. And it just gives a background of myself, and my story, and then different um, interventions that I that I use. And I know that there's a, a pay scale that you have there. Um, yeah. So you say you work with people, which is, I think is pretty admirable of you. So they could call you, or they could email you. Yeah, and again, the first session is just whether it's fitness training or counseling. It's an initial consultation. So that's free. Okay. So it's just an initial consultation to go through. All right. So for pretty much uh, just to reiterate to anybody who's listening, um, we're talking to Jerome Scatura right now, five-time Ironman uh, finisher, uh, ultramarathon uh, runner, uh, licensed clinical alcohol and drug counselor, approved clinical supervisor, and a, and a black belt as well. Uh, if you have you know any need to, to, to for his services, which is uh, you know uh, the counseling, like we mentioned. Uh, you could get you could get a hold of him at say it again nine zero eight is that correct? Yeah, nine zero eight. Yep. Six seven two four two nine zero. Or my email is drj m a n twenty three at gmail dot com. That's mm -hmm. drj man. Okay. And basically, these are confidential conversations that you're having, confidential counseling yes. sessions. Uh, uh, you're you're you know you have a client. Privilege that you're not going to be, tell, uh, you know, divulging information yeah. is uh is also uh, the who of you because you have the license, right? So you can't really, yeah. right? You can't so, really so, check. Yeah. So every license is to protect the client. So I'm licensed to protect the client, right? For sure. That's the only, that's the only reason why the license is there. So I'm obligated under um, under HIPAA laws to call to keep everything confidential. Yeah. How about unless you unless you know if you're if, if you, if you have a plan to harm yourself, or you have a plan to harm someone else, I'm then obligated to, to report that. So. Okay. Um, well, hopefully nobody uh, wants to do that or is right. planning sure. on doing that. That's a, man, that's, like I said before, I think we're all going through a very, we're all in this together. Um, mm -hmm. We're not just, it's not just you, it's not just me. Um, and you are a counselor. Like you said, you still are seeking, uh, you still use that as part of your, strategy to maintain a sharp mind body and soul yeah. right of course definitely how about uncertainty how about uncertainty 
Is that is that part of your uh, your toolbox that you have? How, how to help people through these uncertainties at all? Of course. I mean, I think that's to me. Uh, to me, I believe that fear and uncertainty is at the root of it. So it's at the foundation, right? I mean, even the most optimistic person in the world that you hear has fear and uncertainty. Like, uh, like who? Can we give an example? What's his name? What's that guy? Um, uh, he was a big speaker. He's been around a long time. He does business, uh, business events. Tony Robbins. Yes. Okay. What, what, talk to me about Tony Robbins. So Tony Robbins, right? He he he, he presents in, in in this optimistic, high level, constant energy way. Right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he's discussed it. He may have discussed it. His journey, but even he has fear and uncertainty. I just believe the only way I could be authentic in speaking about this is because I have fear and uncertainty too. And if anyone says they don't, then that's just not true. Bullshit. I'll, I'll say it for yeah. you. I'll say exactly. it for you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's part of human nature. It's how every it's it's how people cope with it, right? Yeah. I think you gave a great example for yourself. You had fear and uncertainty. You picked up a bottle. You were able to put the bottle down because you have a mechanism that you've learned to say, wait, this is not who I am. And then you were able to think about probably your family, right? Yeah. Not everyone has that. They still go to whatever they have to go through to numb that fear and uncertainty. And I'm sure now than ever, it's going to be there, right? Isolation. Isolation now is the best for people with uncertainty and fear. Now, how about... uh yeah, because when people probably can't sleep and they probably want to get that nightcap, they're like, you know, let me just take, get that nightcap just so I could numb myself. Because that numbness is a, you're removing yourself from the situation, right? Right. You have all this shit going on in your life. You just want to, you can't sleep. Let me just hit that bottle one more time. That nice glass of wine, that edible, hit that hit Chi Chin Chong, whatever, whatever it is, right? But that in itself like a right was now. that was that. You kind of got the Cheech and Chong look going. Was that because of my my hair or? You know what? Really, as a side note, was that when I see you more and more when I see you, I think of um, the football guy Australian. You are. Australian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can think it's like double. <laughs> you know? I, I take that. As, I take that as, as a compliment. As a compliment. I don't have his. Uh, his financial status or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, not for sure. Strahan is a cool yeah. dude, but I uh, yeah. I see I see him on, on the uh, Good Morning America, so he's a yeah. pretty cool dude. So really quick, I, I wanted to just say, because you mentioned it, it's okay to have the nightcap, the wine, or the edible, whatever, or the Cheech and Chuck. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not okay. What I am saying is that if it's being used to numb, to forget, to actually escape and and things in your life become destructive because of that. That's what needs to be taken a look at. So basically, you know? con- controllable, a controlled yeah, or, or have or have these coping mechanisms that are positive. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it, it's not it's not only alcohol. It's not only other because you could you could binge on food. Of course, you could binge on on uh, on, on pornos. <laughs> you know, you could binge yeah. on on TV, money. So, money. So you could be, you could put yourself like, hey, I don't drink, so I, I guess that segment is not for me. But you could over consume on other parts of whatever you right. consume. Like I mentioned, there's a I've heard people having uh, addiction to sex, right? So you put yourself into this box of, you know, before we had to go to the VHS store and, and hide ourselves to go buy a. a uh, a, a, a tape, right? A VHS. Yep. But now we could just hide in, in, on the web. and just So there's a lot of things that out there that you could pretty much, like you said, be self-aware, control yourself um, as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the self-awareness is, comes from, from, from the, the unconscious work that we do, right? Like, I just keep going back to your example because it's important. It's like, you know, picking up that bottle, you were able to be mindful of where it was going to take you, only because you've, you've 
you've trained yourself to get through those things already. You know, like me on the bike, like me failing five times. I've, I've been there before. So I know what it's like on the other side if I can push through it or work through it. I don't want to say push through it because that means, I mean, work through it. Yeah. Right? Other side will work out just like this, just like everything that's going on. It will work out. You know, man. Uh, uh, confession time. We could have. Uh, I think that, we, that. I think that's going to be one of the, one of the segments that we have on uh, on this show. But confession time for me. This is this is real stuff that I think uh, I haven't even told my family about this really. Um, so I was in the MBA program at the Ohio State University Fisher College of Business. Um, Eighteen month program and a, a uh, an executive program. And Jay, when I graduated. After I graduated, I walked with everybody else. I came home, and I scratched my head. I was like, what? What, now what? What now? And at the time, I, I really I was still working for uh, for Mercedes, and I was just like, I, I didn't see my, myself still working, working with Mercedes. At the, but I started going into that bottle again because I was like, I need to, I, for some reason, I felt like I had to numb myself. And I stopped exercising. So one was going up, one was going down. The exercising was going down. My morale was going down. My out, output in life. And you would figure, hold up a second. I just got an MBA. I just got an MBA from the Ohio State University. Um, I should probably find a pretty decent job quality. But did, you, did you purposely say Ohio State University again? <laughs> <laughs> that year, actually, I think uh, the Penn State. You guys beat us that that year. I think. I think. I think. I'm not trying to backtrack. I'm just I know. <laughs> just stating the facts. No man, but I, I I graduated. I then I started going down that same path again because I didn't. I I felt. I don't know. I felt. I don't even know what I felt. I, I'm trying to remember. Like exactly. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just explain. Exp- that's the point. See that difference? What's that? You can't, it's hard to say the feeling. And and that's where most people get at. You, 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 you push it away so much at that point, you can't even express that feeling right. It's hard. It is. But if you, we sat along enough, and you could really get to that feeling. And that's the important piece. Right, right here, let me, uh, like any other story, some, depending on who's telling it, there's some parts that are, are omitted. And I think I, I did omit some things out of the story. Let me just be a little bit more clear. Uh, through, during that time, uh, my wife, she was living uh, with, with her parents in Dominican Republic. And we both kind of uh, did this uh, strategically because I was going through this program. It's this 18-month program. So we just had a child. And we both agree that hey, to just to get through this little hump, she's gonna be uh, with her parents with the, with the, the newborn. So I traveled to to Dominican Republic literally every by week by uh, monthly. So every two weeks I was flying down there to spend time, come back. We were we were every, nothing was wrong. It was just like hey, this is gonna be a tough uh, six months of this program. I'm still working. There's a lot of shit going on in my life. And with her being over there, and then when I graduated, she was supposed to come back over here uh, two or three weeks after that. But for me, it's just like, I have to wait now. So I was basically, for 18 months, I was on a grind, right? Either uh, either in the MBA program, either at work, uh, working, obviously, or flying down there to, to spend time with her, and also fly, uh, traveling to New Jersey to spend time with my daughter. So I have all these things going on. So every single week I have something planned out. And then all of a sudden you pull out the MBA program. I was just like, all right, now I have free time to do sh- something. And for some reason, I don't know, I I just gravitated to it, man. And, 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 I, and, I, and I was stuck in this limbo for, to me, it seemed like years. But it was literally days, which was just a very scary thing again. But I, again, I pulled, right. the pl- I pulled the plug at a, at a really good time. Um, and I just started again exercising. I think the exercising is something that people now could, you know. I know you were on lockdown and whatnot, but you could still do things in, indoors. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So what it, kind, there's so many things. So, what kind of things do you think people could do indoors now? Well, I mean, nowadays they have like, you know, like I have like bands. I, I have these long bands that I've used. Um, there's so much on YouTube. There's all these IG live um, fitness 
most trainers do in workouts. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you have a mat, all you need is a mat, a mat, a band, and, and a dumbbell. And nowadays, you don't even just a mat in a home workout or some type of breathing exercises or stretching. Even stretching is powerful. So you're talking about meditation before as well. You do a lot of meditation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, even if it's 10 minutes a day, right, even if it's just 10 minutes a day of some sort of, like, guided or, or music um, meditation where you can have your brain, the thing about meditation is this, it's like, if you're not familiar with it, you have, that's why guided meditation is good in the beginning, because if you get someone good, they can guide you along, whereas if you just sit there your brain's going to take you maybe on levels that you can't control mm-hmm. just yet. Mm-hmm. So it's important to, to do some guided first. You know, have someone guide you. That way you can learn the fundamentals, I guess, right? Yeah. Or like learn, like we're talking, right? So we talk in a way that gets our brain to go to places that are more positive. So if I meditate today, I'm silent. I know how to bring my brain to places that are more constructive in my thinking. So I'm impatient. I can't fucking, I, I, I've never meditated, I guess, but I, I hear a lot of positive. So how can, how can the, the impatient person like myself, what kind, of, what, what kind of things can I do starting after this podcast or, to, or tomorrow? Start five minutes, five minutes, just lie down for five minutes and put on a meditation, um, sound and, and a timer and challenge your mind to just sit there for five minutes flat or and if five minutes is too hard do three minutes flat face first face up face down. i'm assuming face up flat on your back because if, if you sit up you're going to think more about the uncomfortability about sitting up so lie down like you're you're sleeping all right and challenge your brain to just whatever you think let it happen to three minutes Whatever it is. So you okay? So meditation is actually you're actually thinking about something. Well, yes, but if you have the impatient person that maybe he's never meditated before, because we're going to talk to that base, you have, your mind's not going to be trained enough to think about meditative things. Your mind's going to sit down. You're going to think about oh, what do I got to get today? Uh, you know, what was on the news? What do I got to do? But you gotta allow your mind to just do that. So it's basically, if I if I could rephrase it, just put the shit out. I, I, I guess exactly. I don't know. I just think whatever whatever, yeah. whatever it is, just filter that sh- filter that shit out for three minutes. So basically, lot. Li- yep. No, no. Time is the time is the essence in the beginning. That's all. All right. So the strategy. Being able to sit there for three minutes and close your eyes. That's a lot for some people. In silence or mu- with some type of music? Some- I would I would do some sort of meditative music. Silence is a little hard. All right, so a little meditative music for three minutes. Whatever it is, just yeah. think about it. You go on YouTube, put meditation music. Okay. Bam. There you go. Because there's certain beats. There's certain beats that get the mind to work. And then the goal would be to increase minutes right like I, I wouldn't i wouldn't recommend listening to super freak <laughs> why not that's something that i was definitely well, listening to in your case i don't know <laughs> how you doing how you doing, how you doing? <laughs> that's a no no uh, super freak but just uh google or whatever uh meditation yeah. calming like music. Meditation type of music yeah you know? yeah awesome dude i think uh so I think uh, you know, uh, you know, we've we've discussed uh, your background, discussed some some great strategies to go through, some examples that people could actually utilize to to overcome any of these uh, feelings of despair, uh, you know, decreased job security, finances, uh, you know, disturbed sleeping and whatnot. Um, anything else that you think we our viewers or listeners could be able to 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 use immediately? Um, I think, you know, with, within, a, within a reasonable social distancing aspect, is get outside, you know, go out, you know, and, and maybe walk or, or go to a park. Don't, at least once a day, just yeah. get
get out. And yeah. Go somewhere. And, and, you know, social distance yourself. And I'm not talking to, like, the, the shopping center or wherever I'm taking, like, nature. You know? Yeah, being connected with nature, right? Right. Uh, here's something that I'm doing with my uh, my wife right now. She can't she can't leave. She has sickle cell. Um, so unfortunately, she can't. She's one of those high risk uh, people that that keep they keep on talking about. Um, but we get in the car with her and we drive around inside the car. Uh, but with my son, when I'm walking and work with him, I just stop and say, "Hey, do you hear the birds?" And he's all connected with that, you know. Um, so I think that's really uh, important. What you're saying, just get out there and hit the pavement or walk, yeah. right? Uh, because I know you yeah. told you told me that you have you had a surgery, so you can't really. Are you still running, being active? Yeah, so I had um, I had the meniscus tear last year, so and I got the surgery in October, and I kind of rehabbed it, and I'm good. I'm running now as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so. yeah. and I got some races this year, but I don't even know if they're going to be. When, when is it? Because I know you, you said, hey, we should probably get get back together. Well, what, when is uh, the race that you have planned? Well, I told you the one in May. The, the, at the three days at the fair, I signed up for the 48-hour, which is the one-mile loop. Have they canceled that yet? But not yet. They're waiting. Man, I think uh, well, that's going to be tough to do. It will. How long do you think this shit's going to last, man? You know... The way things are going and, and how we see kind of each state now rising with more cases, I think it'll go into May for sure. Through May or up to May? I want to say the end of May. You know? Man, I think I, uh, wrong, I think it may be a little bit longer than that, man. Yeah. I think. I don't I know. know. Again, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just don't see how, like, they could, you know, if, if New York is used as an example, I just don't see them opening New York anytime soon. Yeah, it's, it's Which, bad. That's like the, the whole, the whole country. You know, it's uh, I know you're Italian, right? Um, it's it's it's. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, I think it's sad, man. Looking at the impact this shit has had in uh in Europe, but then again, in your in your home country, right, which is Italy. Um, when I heard that they sent in the, the military trucks to, to retrieve the bodies. That's sad, dude. And then in, uh, a couple of days ago, I heard in New York, in Queens, they they have a pretty much a truck, a refrigerated yeah. truck there just to, uh, you know, keep the bodies. It's just, it's unprecedented. It's it's sad to be honest with you. And I think, uh, as you know, uh, the company that I started was uh, was uh, called Fidelza, and one of the things that we did there was just preparedness, you know. Uh, and the country had, I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to turn this into a political conversation right now, but we're talking about preparedness. We're talking about how can we uh, prepare our minds and body and soul to be able to manage whatever it is you're feeling, right? Uncertainty, fear, uh, but it just sucks that this is where we are right now. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. How, do, you have, do you have any family over there in Italy right now? That no. You know? But, you know, the, I, I guess coming, you know, uh, being Italian, it's, it, the culture over there is just different in terms of like gatherings. You know, they're always gathering, you know, hugging, kissing, and all that. They're always around, so they probably it was going on for months. And that's what you know. You can't do. You know what? Uh, so let's bring that that same uh, mind frame right there that you said. Uh, to to hear so i've been traveling down to louisiana for the past two years because i have a lot of clients on there and man i gotta tell you the what you just said right there it hit, it hit me really hard because i think it's it's the beautiful thing that makes louisiana louisiana uh have you been to louisiana before no it's one of my bucket lists too bro i tell you the uh it's all about culture down there it's, it's you're 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 going to another part of the united states but it's all about culture meaning that People embrace you. The fact that you're Italian doesn't matter. The fact that you're right. uh, whatever, it, does, it doesn't really matter. Food is yeah. the, one of the biggest things down there. Uh, it, it, I felt like I was in Dominican Republic every time I went down there. I think you would feel like you're in Italy down there because it's just everybody hugs each other, talks to each other. Uh, they just don't, you know, there's not a lot of discrimination. There's no, in my opinion, there's not that much discrimination. I didn't see it. Uh, but 
you know, it's sad that they're being impacted dramatically down there with this with this pandemic. And uh, you know, again, it's just my heart goes out to everybody down there out there that's just been uh, coping with this shit. Because now they're going to deal deal with the grief. Uh, and then the doctors and the nurses, they also have to deal with that shit too. So. Yeah, totally. It's, you know, the perspective of it's tough to keep that that attitude that's you know grateful and and present is yeah. really challenging, you know, especially when it's affecting you close. Yes, definitely. All right, so before we break, I want to say thank you, Jerome, for, uh, for making time and being number one patient with me because I know I had some tec- technical difficulties uh, uh, recording this this stuff today. Uh, and I promise you that next time we do this, we'll be in a better uh, better position technologically to be able to, 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 to do this. But before we break, I know we've discussed today uh, you know, your background, your uh, impressive background, some of the things that you've done to overcome uncertainty, fear, and some of the things that you're recommending for our listeners to be able to, to, to use as a strategy today. And one of the biggest things, takeaways that I have is that don't listen to Super Freak when you're doing uh, uh, a meditation. Mindfulness, yeah. Mindfulness. However, uh, afterwards, you could definitely listen to, to, the, to Super Freak by, of Rick, course. by Rick James, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I think, uh, you know, number one, thank you so much. Uh, what does your schedule look like for today or to this weekend, the next week? Are you still working with clients? And if so, what are the things that you're doing that maybe somebody could say, hey, I want to be part of that. I want to, that may be free, I don't know, or maybe besides the counseling or something that's, I don't know, what, what kind of things are you doing? So back in July, I, I found this, um, this online community. Um, it's called recoverydharmaonline.org. It's recoverydharma online.org so it's a buddhist inspired approach to recovery and in july back in july i found it it's online it's on zoom so there's there's meetings there's different recovery meetings um there's usually two or three meetings every day and it's all zoom based so everything that's going on now and even all the aa and na meetings around here and all over the country are going to zoom because you can't be in a yeah. group. You gotta be safe. You gotta be safe. So what I do is I hold I host two meetings a week, a Friday night meeting and a Sunday morning meeting on codependency through that uh, link, recovery dharma how can I work. It's it's free. It's a free service. I do it out of for service. Um, and I and we host I host the meetings and now we've been getting seventy to hundred people on each meeting. So Zoom all over the world. It's beautiful. There's a, a sharing portion. There's a um, a meditation portion, and we read through. We read the uh, Recovery Dharma book, which I have right here. Um, so it it's it's all Buddhist inspired. Did you write that book? No, actually, I didn't. Um, but the guy founded it, Gary Sanders wrote it. It's a great book. And there's no, again, there's no, um, there's no discrimination in terms of recovery at all. So you can be, you can have any form of, of recovery, recovering from whatever, or you can just be dealing with the stress and anxiety from this, what's going on from COVID-19 and join. So recoverydharma.org. Recovery Dharma online. Dot org. Okay, recoverydharmaonline.org, hosted by you. Yeah. Hosted by you, right? Yeah, so I do a Friday, I do a Friday and a Sunday, Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. But there's meetings every day, different hosts. Okay, so, um, all right, perfect. So, recoverydharmaonline.org, yeah. Dharma, onla- Friday and Sunday, Friday at 7 p.m. and Sunday. 9 p.m. Sorry. 9 p.m. Eastern, yeah. Eastern time, and Sunday at 10 a.m. Hosted by you, um, man. I think that, that that could be a pretty great resource for anybody that right now that has what is it? 20, 20 minutes, an hour. Yeah, so it's an hour, but we've been extending it to an hour and 15 minutes because of there's so many people in there. And what we do is we do breakout rooms. So let's say there's a hundred people, we'll have three co-hosts that will break 
break out into three rooms and they'd be like 25 or 30, 30, 30. Or, you know, that hundred gets split. So you're not, uh, so everyone gets an opportunity to share if they will. So what, so is it talking or is it listening to you or is it interactive? What does that look like? Yeah, so it starts out with introductions and then we, we move into a couple of readings about uh, on the recovery dharma and then we do a meditation which is usually guided like I would read from a script from my own meditations or I would share a meditation um, that someone's already done and then we would move into a sharing portion and everyone would have an opportunity to speak if they want so they would raise their hand on zoom on the zoom app and uh, get an opportunity so it seems like you got to get ready for your session tonight at, at 9 p.m., no? Oh, yeah. I don't know. And, and it's it's great. It's like, you know, it's kind of this kind of back and forth feel to it. And, and you have other people you're, you're, you're sharing your experience with. You know, there's a lot of fears that people get out and talk about. Yeah, so. right. All right, man. I don't want to hold you. I know you're a busy man. Um, uh, thank you again for coming on, 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 the, convers- thank you, on the conversation hosted by... Uh, by me, Luis uh, Ramirez, and uh, uh, again, thank you so much for your patience, the conversation with Luis Antonio Ramirez, and I'll be uh, recording more sessions. Jerome, you're more than welcome to come on board anytime in the future, and namaste, I guess, right? Namaste, baby. There you go. Signing off. Thank you.